Hey, welcome back. So last time we managed to sign up a user and if we go to our database, we see that uh, there's uh, a user there that was uh, signed up. Very good. Now what we need to create is a login page because when somebody logs in, they're redirected to the login page. So let's see how we can do that. If I just type login.php, there we go. So what I can do is copy exactly what's in the signup page because it kind of resembles. And I'm just going to go to the login page and paste that there. Then we can figure out what to remove. For example, we don't need the gender when we are signing up. Let's remove that. So we don't need uh, the username either. We just need the email and the password. Then we can change this to login. Some more text to change uh, right here. Instead of sign up, we can have login. Very good. So let's come back here and refresh the page. And this is what we get. Let me separate these two a little bit better. Let me add a break tag between those. Perfect. So now we can log in. Now let's come up here to where we have our code here. Okay. So we have an action here which says create, but uh, we need a different action here which says log in. So I'm just going to say log in there. And this is pretty much uh, what we need to change here. Everything else remains the same. This is the advantage of doing things in a modular way. So all I need now is to create this function inside the user class. So let's go to the user class, the classes themselves and user class dot PHP. So we have this create here. Um, but so let me just duplicate it. Come up here and duplicate. Where are we? There we go. Duplicate, shall we? So we've duplicated the create function and changed it to the login function. So everything here, most of this remains the same. So obviously we don't need the username. We just need the email password. We don't need the gender. We don't need no date. Okay. So we can trim that. The other one, not so much. So let's validate. Now, there's no real reason to validate this information because we don't want to give our possible uh, user some hints. Maybe they want to hack our system. So no need to verify any of this information. So let me just remove the validation. That too must go. Okay, so errors remains as it is. And obviously here we'll have the zero count. So what I will do instead is move our database read to the outside. I probably need this text there. So I'm just going to say read from database. So I'll say read from database. And instead of return, of course, we're going to assign this to a variable. We're going to call it data is equal to db table users. Instead of insert here, we're going to use the select like so. Okay, great. So let's come back here and see how the select should work because it's easy to forget. So let's find it when things are in select mode, what exactly happens? So select here, let's come back to class. So this creates instances. The select gives us the array that we need. Actually, select doesn't get anything. It just runs an existing uh, query. Okay. So select already does that. What do we need to do after select? Well, we just need to run. 
a wear clothes so there we go that's the wear clothes we're looking for very good so let's come back here so select like so wear and then we put our wear clothes right there and let's put our wear text here so what we are looking for really is the email where email is equal to full colon email like so so i forgot the where clause here where like that okay so select where bam now the thing is um let me come down here for a second first if this is um What's going to be? It's going to be an array. If is array data, then things went well. Otherwise, we we got an error. So now the errors here. Are, let me copy this. There's only one error message we should ever give the user, and that is wrong username, not wrong password or we just say one sentence, wrong username or password, because we don't want to give out so much information for security reasons. Wrong email or password. Because if you tell the user that the thing that is wrong is the email, then maybe they were just testing things, then they'll know this email actually exists in this system. Or if you tell them it's a password, then they'll know, okay, okay, so the password is wrong, but I have the correct email. So it's just to give them a very vague message saying wrong email or password. So yeah, that's what we do. And then we return errors. And then here, <clears throat> if you've noticed here, I didn't do where email is equal to that and then continue to say and password is equal to password. I could have done that, but I'm not going to do that because security reasons, of course. Some people are very clever. They will add a carefully crafted SQL here to inject in your system. And then what happens is it's going to ignore the rest of the SQL statement, right? They may say, um, because maybe they know the email already. <clears throat> so instead, they'll craft some other query that will stop things there so instead what i will do even though this is prepared statements which really uh covers uh, what's this prepared statements uh, sorry it covers sql injection these are prepared statements so sql injection is virtually non-existent but it's always better to do things uh, with caution so what I will do instead is I'll just grab the email that I find that is the same because I know every user only has one email. The, every email is unique. Then, only then do I compare the passwords here afterwards. That way, regardless of the query, we just grab the email, but we'll still need to pass the password test. Okay, so let's come back here for a second and let's look at our password. Okay, so the password is right there. And our password is obviously not hashed. We're going to see how to do that. So do not be fiery. And then what we'll do here now is to ask the question, if data is an array, then what we do is we say data is equal to data. We just want to get the very first item in the array, like so. We just want one record. And then we're going to ask the question if, oops, if data this is an object this time if data password be equal to okay if that is equal to okay so this here i don't need to do that <coughs> excuse me because i already have i only have email here so no need to add this password here so instead i'll change this to an actual variable like that otherwise we'll get an error here so I'm just going to copy that password and put it here. So if these two be equal, then we are in business. Otherwise, uh, we're just going to ignore everything and it will come here and say wrong username, email or password and that will be it. But otherwise, if things happened here, 
then we're going to return. So let's come back here and see what we return in the login here. So return errors. If it's not an array here, uh, then things went well. And then we'll be redirected. So location redirection here goes to the index page. So let's say index.php. This is in the login page. When things are successful, we go to the index page. So back here for a second. And if this is true, then we are good to go. So what we need now is to assign a session variable. So if I go to my init.php right here, I need to start my session here, okay? Because otherwise we will not be able to use session variables. Now, for those of you that don't really know what a session is, is that a session is a variable that is exist that can be accessed on any page of your website. You don't need to move the, ver the values around for as long as you are still browsing the same browser, the session variables will remain. Even sometimes when you close the browser and open it again, you find that the variables are still there because for as long as the cookie, the information is saved in the browser, it will remember that. So to activate our session, we type session start like so. Now I'm putting it inside the init or ini file because I know this file is included everywhere from here to the sign up page to the login page wherever i need to use a session i'll just include this and i will know it's included in there okay great great so now that we've started our session we can go ahead and use it so i'm going to go to back to user class here and in here i will do that and say session and then add a variable. I'm going to say user uh, name, for example, is equal to, and then add a username here. Now we're going to create a session class, of course, which will handle this. So we're going to change how we are saving information into the session by using the session class. But for now, this will suffice. So what I will do here is um, session username is going to be equal to data data like that and i have to go back to my uh and see what its username and then there's email okay so username those two are the ones i want this username and the id i think uh, those are more important so let's come back here and say okay so id is okay email yeah anyway you can put whatever data you want here uh, either the email or the the id whatever data will help you to recognize this user so maybe we're going to say id id here we may call it user underscore id is equal to that and then we'll have a username there okay so once we set these variables uh we are done that means the user is logged in because all we need to do now is check if these are set then this user is actually logged in okay if you want some people do this and say logged in like this underscore in and then you can set this to a one like so logged in is equal to one if logged in is equal to zero then they're not logged in so it's entirely up to you what variables you want to set to help you out decide if this user is already logged in or not. So let me come back here now and let's see what we've got. So refresh the page. Let me go back to the login page again and change this part right here, the title, to login so that it shows login at the very top there. Okay, so now let me just type uh something that doesn't make sense yeah okay so now i get wrong email or password it doesn't really tell me what's wrong i get that again so which is good so i'm going to use email at email.com like so and use password as the password so hit 
okay so it's still saying uh, wrong username and password so what's going on email at email.com and password is password okay so let me come back here and see okay so it's still giving me uh, attitude as you can see so let me come down to here and try to debug what's really going on here Okay, so what's going on is because once I'm done with this, it still comes down here and sets this wrong user and password. So what I need to really do here is return. I just say return false or return true, like that. Things went well, return true. You can return true or false, doesn't really matter because on the other side, we are checking for whether it's an array or not. And true or false is neither. Neither of those is an array, so login we have wrong username password so it's still working but when we add the right password and we are redirected to the home page yes the index page right there very good so so far so good we can log in but this time obviously we have some session data so let me go to the index page here and what i want to do let me stop this what's happening here and what I want instead is, let me actually remove all of this. Eh, maybe not, I may want to use it. What I just want is to print readable, print or the session, like so. Not without the variable, obviously. The whole session, like that, so. If I do that, I have all this data in there, even from previous uh, uh, projects that I've been doing. So all this session, because it's all localhost, so it gets all those variables. But the ones that we're interested in are username and user ID and logged in there. These are the ones we added. So if they exist, then we know we are actually logged in. Very good, which means we can extract one of those and say username like so and just say hi hi comma space concatenate like so and when we come back here if i refresh you see it tells me that i'm actually logged in something like this okay so let's see uh what we can do in the next video to handle sessions for the logout uh, part of the tutorial okay I'll see you in the next video.